Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 50 of our Bible study review. The chapters for today, they're going to be 26 through 28. Do you remember where we left off yesterday? 24,000 men of Israel fell because they were seduced by the women of the Moabites. So now we walk into chapter 26 and we see that Yahuwah is commanding Moses to take another census because the one he had before is no good anymore. He has to recount. Now he is recounting this new generation, 20 years and older for war. At the end of chapter 26, we see that the older generation died off. The ones who were cursed because they would not believe the word of Yahuwah. When Joshua and Caleb came to bring the good report, this generation has died off completely. Chapter 27 opens up about laws of inheritance. There are five daughters from the tribe of Manasseh whose father died. He had no sons. They came to Moses and Eliezer and they petitioned before them. They said, look, our father died. He was not among those who were rebelling with Korah. Our father died of his own sins. Why should the name of our father diminish? And why shall we not receive an inheritance because he had no sons? They came to them and said, Give us our inheritance from our father's house, from the tribe of Manasseh. Verse 5. Moses brought their case before Yahuwah, and Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. You will certainly give them an inheritance among their father's brothers, and you will cause the inheritance of their father to pass on to them. You will speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a man dies and has no son, then you will cause his inheritance to pass on to his daughter. If he has no daughter, then you will give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, then you will give his inheritance to his father's brothers. And if he has no brothers, then you will give his inheritance to his closest kinsmen. The inheritance will not die with a father because he had no sons. It will pass on to his kinsmen. This irons out every case scenario. This concludes the laws of inheritance. At the end of chapter 27, we see the succession from Moses to Joshua. Yahuwah speaks to Moses and he tells him, go up to the mountain of Abiram. And he says, look at the land which I am giving to the children for an inheritance. He goes, when I command you to go up to the mountain and look up, he says, you will pass on just like your brother Aaron did. He said, because at the wilderness of Zin, you did not sanctify my word and make me holy before the congregation. This is concerning the time when Moses struck the rock when he was instructed to only speak because the rock represents Messiah. Now, this isn't going to happen right away. The succession has to take place first. And we will see Moses present in the next book, in the book of Deuteronomy. So the story doesn't end just yet for Moses. Now let's read the response of Moshe in verse 15. Moshe spoke to Yahuwah saying, Let Yahuwah, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over all of the assembly who will go out before them and who will go in before them and who will lead them out and who will bring them in. So the assembly of Yahuwah will not be like sheep who do not have a shepherd. Do you see the heart of a true leader? He's not concerned about what Yahuwah said about his death. He's more concerned about Israel not having a leader. Yahuwah instructs Moshe to lay his hands on Joshua and transfer the power. You have probably seen this in your church or in your congregation. If you've seen a lead pastor about to retire, he does not retire and just walk away. He passes the leadership on to another. Right here in this instance, he says, Moses must be there, the high priest must be there, and all of the assembly must be there to witness, to see who their new leader is. Chapter 27 concludes that the power and the leadership is now transferred over to Joshua. The name Joshua is truly the name of our Messiah. It's a modern day version of the name. The earliest form of our Messiah's Hebrew name is Yehoshua, meaning salvation of Yah. Some people say Yahshua, but Joshua, we know that he brings them in. He crosses them over into the promised land. Joshua is also a picture of our Messiah. Now we walk into chapter 28. Let's read verses 1 and 2. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, My offering, my bread for my sacrifice is made by fire as a pleasing aroma to me. You will guard to offer to me at their time. So again, he goes over the daily offerings, the Sabbath offerings, the monthly offerings, the offerings during Passover, and the offerings during the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot or Pentecost. 
Now, I'm not going to read the specifics of these because we already read them in Leviticus 23. But the purpose of him telling this new generation all of these commands is because they are the youngins. The command of Yahuwah Elohim is from generation to generation. The families will pass down the laws, the commands, the covenant. So that is what is taking place. That's his law. It's a perpetual statute. The main reason why you see chaos running rampant in the world, a generation has dropped the baton. Much like you see Moses handing the power over to Joshua, the same is supposed to take place in our families with the word of God. So I don't know where you are and I don't know where you stand. Maybe your parents dropped the ball, but nonetheless, the heavenly father is going to stir up his spirit. So even if you are the first one, the first generation in your family to know and honor the commands and the covenant, pass it down to your children. This assures that you and them will be blessed. Deep and word family, that is all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.